Yo. Hello. MC Starman here, Martin Contois, with uh, Diana Robinson on the edge of the Cowichan Valley Estuary um, in beautiful southern Vancouver Island. Welcome, friends. We uh, made it to 700 um, subscribers, which is really big <laughs> deal for us. Um, we're growing slowly, and so your support's really important. And however you engage, you know, share, write comments, uh, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, the more you engage, the more you massage the algorithms. And so help us grow. Um, and thank you for joining the channel. Um, um, and so we're doing a video on? Today we're going to be doing a video on the Capricorn full moon coming up. It's going to be on July 3rd, which is going to be Monday next week from where we're at right now recording. And we're excited to share some info with you. We're calling it birthing our full potential after looking at the chart. And we'll get more into that later. Capricorn full moon and we're solely Luna inspiration. Every new moon and full moon we come uh, live no editing, uh, one take, that's all it takes. <laughs> so the Capricorn full moon, uh, let's look at it on the on the table. Sure. Going to dive right in. Woo! There we go. So on the table, so we have the moon in Capricorn. So let's, uh, full moon in Capricorn. What does that feel like to you, uh, moon in Capricorn? Moon in Capricorn. Um... I haven't paid attention to it much in my monthly cycle, but I would picture moon being our inner world, our home, our body. And then Capricorn's affirmation is I use. It's very practical and gets things done. Initiative energy, cardinal energy. So I'd see a lot of focus and drive. Uh, a moon in Capricorn, I would say, is very ambitious. <laughs> okay. Yep. She's ambitious. She's Saturn driven. Yeah. The moon is in a feminine sign. She wants to make a mark. Mm, and right. of course, she does it a very nurturing way. So it's not going to be a small house in the woods. It's going to be a big house, you know, in the city. You know, it's a mm. Capricorn um, driven, ambitious uh, moon. Uh, on the opposite of that, we have a sun mercury conjunction so the full moon is a sun in capricorn moon i mean sun in cancer moon in capricorn a happy summer by the way we just got into our summer season and then we have a mercury sun conjunction in cancer now what does that feel like i've heard you refer to this before as combustion when the mercury connects with the sun when, what do you mean starting with the sun and cancer feels? On Ju on July 1st, uh, the exact conjunction of Mercury and the sun mm -hmm. will look for a combustion then for sure. And so that's usually very difficult to think straight. Uh, at the same time, it's a very important part of the, uh, of the uh, Mercury uh, sun um, cycle you know we know the retrogression we have when uh, mercury is moving retrograde is a conjunction with the sun but then also when the mercury is moving direct and so when move, mercury is moving direct it goes in the back of the sun so it's from the earth mercury is in the back of the sun and it'll peak out so then while it's passing the sun it's not being seen at all from the earth and so in the old days, symbolically, it was Mercury going down the hill or in the darkness of the shadow. And so then at that at this full moon, then Mercury's just peeking out. And on July 1st is the exact conjunction. Yes. So the combustion, that's beautiful. But what is a sun in Cancer like? Sun in Cancer? Uh... Well, after Gemini season, now that the sun is in Cancer, it's like a whole about a month season. And it feels like very focused on the home and nurturing. Cancer is the fluids of our body and it's represented a lot by the ocean. That's why part of why the crab is the symbol for Cancer. So I see this as like a much more nurturing time and 
people who have sun and cancer can tend to be a lot more um, motherly and nurturing as a temperament. Well, and it also follows Gemini, right? Mm -hmm. So like, ah, speeding, <laughs> move, go, 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 go. Uh, Gemini sun and then come the solstice, the sun moves into cancer. And so, um, so then that cancer is very nurturing. It's a feminine and it's ruled by the moon. So then that ambitious moon, you know, and then the cancer uh, sun. I think that the cancer sun would probably like a house in the woods and the cancer moon, the, the, the moon in Capricorn is very ambitious. And so that makes for an interesting kind of, um, well, I think that, and, and what also makes it very interesting is that there's this bowl shape and we'll show you the chart, but we have Mercury sun, moon, and Jupiter and Saturn are sextile, trine, sextile, trine, forming what we call a bowl. And we'll show that to you. And so then that really adds Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn rules Capricorn. So we have that Saturn in Pisces moving retrograde and Jupiter in Taurus. And Jupiter in Taurus wants to give form to things saturn and pisces wants to create a safe container moon and cancer the uh, sun and cancer is very nurturing moon and capricorn uh, wants to do something of significance so that's what uh, yeah. what how do you flesh that out I was going to say maybe one more thing to speak to there with the Capricorn cancer is that um all these things are kind of a polarity and they're an axis so the axis of cancer and capricorn from what i've gathered from my studies is that this is really a like parental axis when you look at a natal chart you'd see it also signifies the midheaven and the ic so the highest point of the chart and the lowest part of the chart so the part of us that pushes us to grow and the part of us that grounds us and holds a home that we can grow from mm -hmm. the sun and cancer the sun in the, su in the sign of the mother mm -hmm. and the moon the mother in the sign of the father so um it's kind of a little bit um kind of not quite um as comfortable as it seems very feminine though huh yeah. um most of these planets are in feminine feminine signs one of the other things about the full moon so the full moon is 180 degree you know splits the the uh, zodiac in two and then we have in aries 90 degrees from the sun and 90 degrees from the moon forming what is called a T-square or a square with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. And so, was it, you know, I was thinking about it during the, 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 equi the solstice, you know, and, and Father's Day and, mm -hmm. and how we looked at the uh, at the winter solstice, we call it the healing of the mothers. And I think now, you know, the healing of the fathers, you know, the, you know, the great, you know, our relationship with the masculine. Um, it's, you know, it's complicated, this whole healing of the masculine and the feminine. And uh, so, yeah. And 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 that's how we came about the uh, the rebirth of your full potential. You know, the mm -hmm. the moon driving you to be ambitious, the sun nurturing Jupiter, Saturn, and Chiron. And we'll show you that in the chart. But first, mm -hmm. pick a card, any card. All right, best card for this Capricorn full moon. Doop 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 doop. doop. Oh, Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands, fiery, intuitive Knight of Wands. I guess that refers to that Venus-Mars conjunction, isn't it? I think that's a big part of it. When you were saying healing of the masculine, healing of the feminine, it made me think of how we have Mars and Venus, our feminine and masculine self, are very close together right now in Leo. So let's look at the chart again to see what uh, we just looked at mm -hmm. in the more... You know, so then you see that sun, moon in the first, the sun, mercury in the first house. So that's a very, you know, so so that nurturing sun, the the the, 
the healing father plays a really important role. Then we have that moon in Capricorn and show that bowl shape. So then we go to Saturn and Pisces, that blue line, and then another sextile to Jupiter and Taurus. And then it completes the bowl back to the sun. And then the cross inside the bowl there, oh, that red. The, no, the, the, two, the two trines. Yes, that's usually what you see in the bowl shape is you'd see three sextiles and two trines uh you know and so that's a very and it's a feminine bowl so it's a it's a holy grail of sorts and then chiron is at the bottom of it there um the wounded healer so that's that form we've been fleshing out for you um anything else we have to say on that before we move to venus and mars conjunction I feel complete for now. I did have something, but when it comes back up, I'll mention it then. <laughs> when it comes back up. Yeah. Right here, we have a little, um, so sun and moon square Chiron. Put the words of, we are the author of our story. Because one thing I recognize out of this big T square here is, is it's all on the cardinal square cross. So Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn, they all are sort of cardinal starting a new path energy. Um, and so there's a big calling when there's a full moon that make exact aspect to Chiron. There's a, a calling to heal yourself or, and one of the best ways I've found is to, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change and to be coming from a place of empowerment can allow us to, to heal and step into a healthier version of ourselves. And then you said something beautiful about the sun conjunct Mercury in cancer. You said communicating our needs and then mm -hmm. wrote air to breathe. And so it's interesting to note that in this chart, there are no planets in air signs. Empty, empty. <laughs> so empty. <laughs> we may not be very, very clear in our thinking. It's, 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 we may be sucking for air in terms of intellectual and with the, that uh, beautiful um, um, night in the of wands also very fiery so that brings up to that at the bottom of the chart there you see venus and mars and venus and mars set together after the sun every night and uh, um, um venus is very bright right now it's its brightest of her phase she's going to be turning retrograde in July sometime, right? Yeah. And so now she's very close to Mars and you can see them in the sun, in the sky together and they're in Leo and they go to Neptune, Chiron and Uranus. So let's uh, flesh that out. What do you see in that? Uh, Venus, Mars and aspect to Uranus. Well, just Venus and, and Mars in itself. And then, yeah. One Seems of the things that came up which I mentioned earlier, is just this union of the feminine and masculine. Um, and also where I wrote the creative genius because it's making aspect to Uranus, which both Uranus to me sounds like uh, like instant inspiration. And then Leo, especially Mars and Venus and Leo is very creative. So there's a lot of creative power that could be tapping into. Venus and Mars, we talked about it. You know how Venus and Mars had an affair and they gave birth to Cupid. And so Cupid being the god of love. It's interesting, huh? It's a very important cycle of relationship. And it's not going to come to a full conjunction, which is the beginning of a new cycle. But you were saying how your experience, so many relationships are ending. And we talked about in the last one, a last video how that Venus Mars would be, you know, bringing people together in romantic relationships, you know, especially in Leo. So a lot of dissatisfaction with old relationship and a need for new relationship or a new cycle in relationship or a time for learning to fall in love again with with our partners. And so that, you know, with Venus so high in the sky and so bright, this is uh, Venus in her Fortuna aspect. She really attracts a lot of attention. She's very extroverted. 
she wants to be beautiful and so that venus in our you know in our chart and then the venus in leo you know very fiery so then she wants to be seen so the venus in us is wants to be seen so making an effort to see the venus in others can be very beneficial for one's relationships uh, but then also Mars in Aries. What does Mars in Aries feel like? Um, what is Mars? Mm, Mars in Aries is what I have, and I feel like it makes me go, 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 and sometimes go, um, go, go. Not Aries, thinking. Mars in the Leo. Oh, yeah, sorry, Mars in Leo. My misspeaking. Yeah, I see a lot of drive and potential for leadership, but also sometimes um, can lack perspective and just kind of, goes ahead charging and not looking at what's around or what's ahead well to me <laughs> mars in leo is really perfect for the knight of wands right it's like yeah. let's go you know follow one's inspiration and so uh, mars in leo is very flirtatious mars in leo wants attention you know if you look at the 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 knight of wands he wears beautiful feathers and He's a, as at a gallop, you know, is and 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 very exciting, and he wears salamanders, uh, the you know, an animal associated to the sun, um, and so, um, in that sense, with that Venus Mars, we want to be seen, you know, like uh, like mm -hmm. I bought a new hat. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't let me wear it, but that's okay. It didn't fit with my beautiful purple shirt which is very Venus, good gold. You know, so Venus, Mars, we want to be seen. Venus wants to be seen. Mars wants to conquer. And so uh, uh, that very, um, that's a very important part of this summer. And then when Venus turns retrograde and then literally she's going to fall out of the sky and disappear and become the evening star, and that whole process of Venus dropping out, you know, pay attention to Venus after sunset, you know, tonight and see how bright Venus and Mars, especially Venus, and pay attention to it every night. And in a month, she's going to start moving backwards. And every night she's going to get lower and lower till she disappears mm -hmm. with the sun and then she'll pop out on the other side as the morning star. So that's a very important um, part of the astrological cycles is to be in touch with the Venus. Um, mm -hmm. So where is your Venus? My Venus is in Scorpio. In Scorpio. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your Venus is in Pisces? Yes. Watery Venuses. <laughs> watery Venuses, very feeling vi Venuses. Mm -hmm. So what does a fiery Venuses feel like to you? Hmm. Uh advent well, I guess it depends, but I see it like adventurous, someone who like really loves adventure and attention. And I've seen Venus in fire signs also really love comedy and art like theatrical art i should say loves the stage venus yeah. and leo is like a diva i know some really amazing painters and drawers who also have venus and leo and and it's funny with leo there's this part that loves attention loves to shine but there's this other part of leo that can almost be like shy to get that or shy to show up for that at times and some of the most amazing artists i know have venus and leo and they don't they're not the best at um promoting their artwork um, oh well that would be other factors in the chart i mean yes, mars be is weak. things yeah sure. maybe mars would be weak yeah. um um we have some beautiful flowers we harvested yeah. from the garden that's a that's another venus in leo huh? martin grown and made beautiful bouquet here mm -hmm. and so that's our uh, venus mars in leo what else mm -hmm. do we got going that's well, about Saturn's it, right? retrograde. Oh, yes, Saturn you want to retrograde. Speak to what did you say about Saturn retrograde? I haven't spent tons of time on that yet. Well, you know, the retrograde, you know, so Saturn came into Pisces at the beginning of the year and it raised through about not to about 
seven degrees and then it turns back and then now it's going to go all the way to zero degrees Pisces before it turns direct again and moves further into Pisces. And we did a, a long video on the Venus the, of on Saturn in Pisces and 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 you know creating a safe container you know having making sure your your container your your boat your 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 um spiritual practice well your 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 container is safe you know if you're in the you know the deep pipe water waters of pisces your spiritual practice and your sense of self needs to be really well contained you know Saturn, you got to make sure there's no leak in the boat, you know, and so working at one safe, safe container. And so now Saturn moved, raced ahead. Now it's in retrograde phase. So it's looking back. OK, you know, maybe I missed this hole and maybe there this is where I'm losing some energy and this is where things are not being really well contained and you're getting to review. It's also going to the second pass. So if you have any planets at the beginning of Pisces or at the beginning of any of the um, mutable. mutable signs, so Gemini, Sagittarius, or Virgo, Saturn is making either an opposition or a square to those planets. So you're going to be experiencing your second pass. I have my sun right here at two degrees and my Mercury at nine degrees. So then the Saturn, especially my sun. So I'm going to go through my second pass of Saturn. So then Saturn says... Uh, Excuse my friends, but get your shit together, you know. And then Pisces, in this, you know, in Sun in Pisces is like, do I really have to incarnate? And Saturn says, yes, you have to incarnate. You have to give birth to your work. You got to do a video. And so, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of feeling, you know, more power. Saturn in in in, in to my Sun is like kind of boosting up especially that my sun is so strongly constellated with other planets so it's triggering my whole grand cross so that's really how you're going to feel the set saturn retrograde it's what it's doing to your planets and now it's going to be making the second of three uh, exact angle to whatever planets you have in the beginning degrees of mutable signs and especially Pisces but also Virgo, Gemini and Sagittarius. Get that? Flesh that out pretty good? No, I think that's great. So what this Saturn triggering in your chart? Oh, that's right. Saturn. You have Saturn what degree? Uh, five. So right now you're getting experiencing your Sat. So how is this feeling? This uh, second pass of Saturn to your Saturn. So Day's going, Diana's going through her Saturn return. You may have heard the term. And so now Saturn is moving a second time over or just past. So then what theme is coming up in your psyche and in your progress? Um, a lot of need for, for discipline and home care and self-care, but also needed a lot more alone time than but I ever have needed or have let myself hugged in the past saturn is very solitary mm -hmm. likes it's solitary time yes yes be grateful for it and then it's 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 triggering a um it's on my ic so the bottom of the chart actually funny kind of speaking to earlier that capricorn cancer axis can be parents and when my saturn was in opposition i right right after i met my dad for the first time and now i'm meeting his family for the first time when it hits on its second path. So that'll be interesting. Well, also, I think that, um, you know, from from an observer to your process, mm -hmm. I would say that, uh, you know, Saturn and Pisces, you know, there, there's a very um, strong mystical talent there, you know, and, and I think that you're embodying that much more, you know, and I think people are seeing much more 
that Saturn and Pisces, it can be very unsettling, you know, because one is very serious about one's spiritual practice with Saturn and Pisces. And so then, then, then uh, embodying more fully that Saturn and Pisces, it, it has some challenges associated with it, you know, in that it's very solitary and it kind of pushes, you know, especially this Capricorn moon is angling Saturn as well. So does that resonate with you? Oh, yeah. There might have been some interesting pushes that way. Huh. Cool. All right. All right. So then you have some medicines to talk. Oh, no. Let's talk about the... Let's look at the chart once more. Sure. Make sure we're not forgetting anything. Looks like we went over it all there, but... Well, the one thing that we could talk Jupiter. about... Well, the one thing that we could talk about is a question for you. And then we can... So the... Venus Mars conjunction mm -hmm. make no angle to the moon. Yeah. So then, how would that be experienced? Um, maybe because Venus and Mars are in Leo, which is ruled by the Sun, and the Sun is active in this moon full moon. Well, if this was the chart of an individual, okay, we would say that the individual has a hard time accessing the venus mars conjunction because it makes no angle right also when a planet doesn't access sometimes that planet will become will kind of take over you know so that we could have the tendency to overemphasize venus over mars because it's not being really seen by the moon and the sun right. so then then one could like uh an alternative personality or well or or be very rebellious and not want to be so responsible and just you know go off and be a diva venus you know leo mars leo just be real playful and shine one's responsibilities you know it's making angle to neptune and to chiron and to uranus you know so like you know, let's be revolutionary, let's be mystic, let's be healers, but whatever. I don't want to have to deal with my responsibility. While the other side of the personality, you know, the sun and the moon are really, you know, the the father and the mother of the individual. And, you know, in Cancer, Capricorn, this is a very, like, uh, let's get down to business, especially with Jupiter, Saturn, and that whole bowl thing. So one could be rebellious against that or distracted mm. or feel split by a need to play mm. versus a need to be responsible and create a strong foundation for one's life. I hear that echoing a lot lately. <laughs> I think that's also summer, but sure is uh, echoed lately in the, the need for play and it's summer and the need for how much work needs to get done because it's finally good weather to get the work done. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, huh? Is uh, well, there's that fable of uh, La Fontaine. Uh, I think uh, Isops also is the, the la ciel et la fourmi. The I don't know what it's you know la ciel et la fourmi. La ciel a enchanté tout l'été, se trouva four dépourvu quand l'hiver fut venu. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, I almost remember. Anyway, I think that those are really cool fables, uh, but uh, they're taken from Isop's fables, mm -hmm. and it's about the what's the seagull, the cricket, and the and yes. the the cricket and the ant. Oh, that's a good one. That's and the cricket, the, cr the cricket was um was left uh, really in a very difficult position because he had played all summer long, mm -hmm. and the ant had been working all summer long. And then, you know, there's a moral of the story there. And so then I think we could have a lot of the of the the cricket and the and the ant kind of thing. And mm -hmm. and I don't know about you, but I'm being really uh, ant like mm -hmm. um, best garden I've planted in years. And nice. as the flowers and as the fuchsia can attest, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the harvest will be abundant uh, if uh, the gods please. Um, and so if the gods are willing and uh, certainly is a beautiful summer for gardening, huh? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, giving form to things and uh, and I think that there's a real sense that um, 
these difficult times we're navigating through are not over and and that uh, a lot of us you know well we live on vancouver island so we're kind of blessed you know and so the playfulness is really rich and and exciting but uh, also i think that uh, we're all feeling a need that moon in capricorn kinds of drives us so does that flesh that flashes out pretty good huh that flashes out really good yeah i love the cricket and the ant analogy the cricket and the ant fable yeah. yes we should look at that in english i remember it in french i was impressed i remember that fable growing up should i bring it back into the body please All please right. so if you've oh, been watching us gonna do the dates, the oh important sure. dates. Okay. so mercury conjunct the sun on july 1st that's the combustion we talked about so keep an eye, an eye with that then the full moon right after that on July 3rd. This is Monday and then Wednesday. One thing I might add for the Mercury congestion, uh, conjunction with sun is just being mindful with our words because um, with that cancer influence, there's a lot of potential to, if, if we can say it in a way that we're saying our needs versus demanding our wants can maybe help us communicate clearer. And the fact that there is no air in the chart at all, you know, thinking things through, really <laughs> slow them down, yeah. think things through, and it may be very difficult to think. So, yeah, uh, take some time, think things through before you act. Capricorn full moon on the 3rd, July 12th, Mars ingress into Virgo. And so that's going to be very ant-like mars in <laughs> yeah. virgo i'm ready for it and then july 23rd venus stations retrograde so then the falling off the sky of venus begins and then this july oh so in the set before that on oh, the 17th yeah, is the new moon is the new moon in cancer which uh, is going to be a very intense new moon in opposition to pluto so I think that um, that's gonna um, well that'll be the subject of our next video yeah it's cool. a good reminder too to, to do take time to play it is a good time with Mars and Venus in Leo to find new creative outlets and to let yourself play and find the beauty of the summer with them because more hard works around the corner too <laughs> and the next week we're going to do a video on the Venus retrograde and we call it we're calling it the uh the the venus uh the venus challenge mm. um and so it's a it, it throughout the venus retrograde we're going to spend a lot of time in exploring the myths of venus and of trying to uh, uh help you and help us ourselves uh give some focus to uh, venus in our own charts and in our own psychic economy i'm looking forward to that be good times moving into our body uh woo -woo. we have cancer so it's a cancer full moon sun's in cancer for this month cancer rules our stomach but it rules specifically the, the fluids in our body so this is also the mammary glands um and the connective tissues so all these connective tissues within the body they need calcium fluoride uh, so calcium fluoride is tissue salt number one. It's also known as fluoride of limestone. And it's found prevalently in raw vegetables, sesame seeds, spinach, broccoli, mushrooms, squash, and pineapples. If you're looking to get more in your system, you can also uh, take it supplementally in this form here. Jackson's is a company. There's also Schusler salts. Um, this tissue salt is predominantly important for the fluids and then the connective tissue that's within the fluids. So um, a deficiency of this salt can look like things like varicose veins, um, also muscles being too stretched out, not coming back. It's really good tissue salt for after, during and, uh, sorry, before, during and after any childbirth, really helping the body to bring the connective tissue back into its strength and alignment place. Um, or if you've done any serious sports or anything that may have pulled a muscle out, this can also be really helpful at healing and tightening that back up. It's good for all stages of life, but I love this quote of, it helps our body to stretch, bend, pull, push, relax, tear, repair is more like it. 
So the more we can stretch ourselves to grow and then come back into balance right away, um, we will expand our capacity in our body, but also um, allow the musculature and the connective tissues to come back and come back into balance right after. It's interesting. You got tissue salt number one, mm -hmm. you know, so there's you know 12. 12 like the like the signs mm -hmm. and in ancient times cancer was the first sign of the zodiac it was the gateway of souls and so that's fascinating how uh it grew you know so then uh, yeah i love that too i didn't know but until i started studying tissue salts and then in the dr george carey's work he said the same thing like Cancer was actually the beginning because from Aries to Gemini is what happens that leads to birth. So if we look at it like conception is Aries and then the building up of the body is Taurus and then the nervous system and the heartbeat and all that exciting beginning, like as it continues on developing is Gemini. And then once it's actually coming through those mucous membranes, then it's birthed is Cancer. But so it, it was interesting, you know, the zero degree of cancer, which is the, the solstice point, uh, summer solstice point, was known as the beginning of life, but also the end of life, mm. you know, so so it's the point of beginning, but it's also the point of end. So um, it was the gateway mm. to, uh, to the earth realm and the so literally to come in and to come out was associated with the beginning of cancer and the moon. And of course, in ancient astrology, the moon was known to come before or was closer to the earth. And they lo everyone looked at the earth as the center of the universe. So the first planet to study was the moon. And everything in ancient astrology is based on the moon. And the cycle was the moon. And so then that cancer, you know, then was really important in that sense. And and of course, those were matriarchal times. Mm -hmm. And now we put so much emphasis on the sun in our patriarchal times. So a return to the moon and connecting with the moon and the sign of cancer in this cancer sun period and then we're going to have the cancer new moon coming up at the end of the season uh, yes well at the well at the end of this cycle blah blah yeah. blah blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> i love that it's like it's neat too because in olden times i feel like there's a lot more connection with earth and tissue salt like the first tissue salt cal uh, calcium fluoride is it's about the connectivity of our body and connecting back anywho all these cool connections in life <laughs> moving on to capricorn because the moon's there and be bringing some emphasis to the capricorn aspects in ourself uh capricorn is all about the structure it rules the knees the bones and the skin that which holds our body upright and strong um the tissue salt is calcium calcium phosphate or traditionally it was called calcera phosphorica calcium phosphate uh gives strength and solidity to the bones and it's found naturally in almonds cucumbers white beans dandelions cherries spinach and dates um this tissue salt is found in large amounts in blood plasma also our saliva gastric juices back to the bones and the teeth so what we can often see is if the juices aren't if we don't have strong digestive juices and our saliva is not uh, in a healthy strong state then we don't absorb as much of the minerals through the tissues of our stomach into our bones um so this is where this tissue salt can be really supportive is to either help repair the bone structure or also help to again nourish that cancer aspect the opposite um, of the mucosal membranes if you don't have enough any you can see things like osteo um, arthritis osteoporosis different osteo issues osteo meaning bone issues growing pains is another sign um but something funny i found was uh if you easily get fractures or if you have late dentition in children so this is when the teeth show up later than usual um that can be a sign of deficiency as well so again maybe looking at incorporating these foods into your diet more or supplementing with these little sweet homeopathic sugar pills um and then herbs that support the capricorn aspects of ourself is horsetail slippery elm and comfrey so these things again help to strengthen our bone structure and slippery elm is, is supporting that mucosal lining that allows us to absorb more nutrients. 
Yeah, thanks for listening. That was fun. And so we're the Healer and the Dreamer Astrology Channel. I'm Martin Contois, um, and this is my email address, Spirit of the Times at uh, 108 at gmail.com. If you want a reading, some dream support or astrology support, uh, please reach out and day by day healing, Dayana Robinson, day by day healing at gmail.com. Reach out. Um, um, we do these videos um, to um, get uh, new more acquainted with our work, and um, we're supported by. Uh, by the work that we do. And so that's a great honor to be of service. Thanks for joining us. That was fun, huh? Did you like this video? That was really fun. Yeah, I did. Happy summer, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and making it this far if you did. From uh, the Cowichan uh, Valley Estuary and the land of the Cowichan people, uh, over and out. Thank you all so much. Enjoy.